Um, to sort of explain why this book is interesting to me, I do have to tell you something about my project and my research as it is at the moment. Um, my research investigates contemporary feminist art practices that, in reaction to political mergers of feminist ethics with um, animal rights activism in the 70s, makes use of animal biomatter, um, such as fur or bones, blood, as part of an extension of the human body in a subversive strategy to reject norms of gender and species politics by reimagining furriness and the texture of otherness, intimacy, and queer erotics, rather than pin up glamour sexuality and such. Um, I found a quote as well in, that said that in colloquial British usage, to fur up is to coat or clog with a deposit, and to make a fur fly is to cause serious, perhaps violent trouble. Um, so in the same way that recognizable animal bodies are rendered into anonymous product, process through production line processes of desensitization and fragmentation of Buddhism, social history has seen a dramatic incline towards smooth and fabricated <laughs> towards a smooth and fabricated body as a favorable aesthetic, um, representing physical health, sexual normality, while promoting restrictive and subordinate laws of social and sexual conduct, especially for women. Um, Bifa Bugarati, whom I love, claims this change as distinctly digital in nature. Society's declines in empathy is directly related to the increasing smoothness of our world, a world in which conjunction, the existence of different but um, different entities existing next to each other and influencing each other, versus connection, which reduces the world to ones and zeros, which always breaks down one of those entities and one always has to suffer. Um, anyway, our digital society is much more connective in nature than conjunctive in nature. My Research focuses on female artists that take up a certain form of furriness as a disruption of the connect, connected visual and social strata. Examples are Barty Palmer, Bertie Jenkinson, Rebecca Horn, Merrick Oppenheimer, Ronnie Horn, and controversial Dutch artist Tinkerbell, some of you might know. Um, now, Black and Blue, back to the book, is written by Carol Nagler, she's a professor of visual studies in Manchester. Um, that I ran into while researching materials on the relationship between fur and feminism two years ago. Black and Blue is a personal and very poetic investigation into the effective powers and politics of colour in Camelus de la Jete and Saint Soleil, near Ocean and Mamon Amour. It is about memory, it's about longing, it's about love, time, distance, race, film photography, intimacy, violence, and loss. And she says, I find Black and Blue black and blue everywhere. It abstractly brushes and stains me in the black and blue paint of Barnett Newman and Mark Rothko. It figures in Francis Bacon, it sings to me in the voice of Louis Armstrong in his recording in 1929 of what did I do to be so black and blue. The subject of this book are trapped in tragedies of their own. Loneliness, racial inequality, memory and war disrupt people's lives and their ability to feel connected. The problem of connection relates back to the inaccessibility of the visual media their stories take place in. Marath Mavis' protagonist's blueness starts as a bruise, a disruption of perfect skin, and works itself into the source of permanent memory print. Her text shimmers with a desire for access, for grip, a longing to make a smooth and shiny and penetrable materials of photography and film accessible, somehow more touchable, by exploring the folds of melancholy, the blue, and erotics, black, um, conditions that are both inextricably linked to being touched, in my opinion. She says, black is the color of the dark room of desire of cinema, of bad luck cats, of the velvet dress of John Singer Sargent's Madam X, of the morning coat lined with fur, with matching skull cap worn by Hans Holbein's Christina of Denmark. Blue is the colour of the blues, the ink that I use is a blue blood of the swan, 
of the sea, of the cyanotype, and of memory. What I'm trying to figure out is how this book presents itself between the lines as a third piece of work, causing some serious, perhaps violent trouble. A third work disrupts normative patterns, gets too close without asking, and carries the smells of a living creature. We live in close conjunction with animal bodies, but we can never fully control them or make them fit perfectly. Animals always tend to tend to push trouble. Maine's text is lined with subtle references to animal pelts, fabrics, woven materials, sensuous and irregular surfaces, and with pricking and cutting, attempts to stitch a fabric of affective moments together and simultaneously presenting the feminine labor of embroidery as a form of academic analysis. Figures of cats, of fur coats, butterflies, taxidermic specimens, swans and scallops dominate her scene, bringing about a metaphysical quality to the text. She describes the stillness of the celluloid image in Magite, equivalent to the stillness of taxidermy animal bodies that the film depicts. She says that Magite is almost as immobile as the taxidermy's unblinking animals the couple visits in the gallery of zoology. They are an outer shell for them. The role, taxidermy in, the role of taxidermy in her work is really interesting to me because it's something that's hard to avoid when dealing with bird bodies. Each bird body, however beautifully preserved or reworked, is in essence a dead rat. For all, fur always carries with it a lingering stench of decay. As a conjunctive presence, the taxidermy body is both magical and repulsive at the same time, and our desire for it is impossibly conflicting. They are neither alive nor dead, but somehow stuck in between, which to me sounds very similar to photography and cinema. In another book, The Reckless Zoo, Rachel Polly Quinn describes taxidermy as the artist's chief motivation is the desire for closeness. Taxidermy is a way to bring the world closer, to stimulate or simulate an experience we could otherwise not have. As such, the taxidermy animals and agite bring to the scene a feeling of erotic possibility, which enables the protagonists to briefly entertain their temporary fairy tale as a reality before they lose it all. Violent trouble, indeed. Taxidermy is a state of suspended promise, a state of almost touching, or in other words, a state of conjunction. The subtle interwoven mentions of animals and animal textures in Mabra's text could be a way to invoke a feeling of proximity and possibly, proximity and possibility, sorry, by bringing into the scene the effective prop properties of animal body matter, skin, fur, or blood. A different angle is Lynn Hurst's book, Eroticism and Body Politic, in which the taxidermy is theorized as an aspect of human fetishism ultimately motivated by feelings of melancholia, desire, and loss. In fetishism, and psyche constructs a simulacrum as a way to negotiate an amount of reality, replacing loss object and desire with souvenirs. So often for the mothers keeping bits of hair for the children, or lost lovers and keeping little fingers a bit attached to things they smell. Um, Biometric gives a visual grip for the psyche to hold on to, creating a tangible replacement for lost children, lovers, parents, and others. In this light, Mayla's focus on images of hair, fur bodies, and animal bodies offers us something to cling on to, to sink our teeth in, it, if you will. For example, her images of women's hair, pinned up, coiled, blonde, in Argentina and Vertigo, becomes a way of feeling close, physically and symbolically, to an experience of reality through fetishized texture. It becomes a way of getting stuck in another, in the smooth surfaces of film that are otherwise impenetrable, the way you would when running your hair through someone's, your hands through someone's hair. The coiled bun of hair on the back of Kim Novak in Vertigo, which is the bottom of the picture, becomes Vertigo in itself, spinning on and on, drawing the viewer in. I am reminded of an inside-out negative parallel to Ronnie Horne's bird series, which I would love to show you, but I wasn't allowed to. Um, which replaces the face, the, an, the human face, with animal backs of heads, animal textures, to create a more oblique relational affect of proximity, 
And in both cases, it's less about knowing the other and more about feeling close by becoming fixated on the surface. Thank you.